Hey, I'm just demonstrating how I do, um, whoa, look at my awful looking face without the glasses. And this is how I capture tunes, this is just talking to the camera. Yeah. Oh man, I just I kinda like woke up. Now I don't even know if I was asleep and I don't even, you know it uh Yeah. Let's see. But um I had to been a little bit asleep, maybe. That's that's how it usually goes, is that I can't tell if I've been asleep or if I've just been sitting there pretending to be asleep. Now I'm just going around looking for my glasses. That's what happens whenever you go to sleep and you got glasses. You try to figure out where the glasses went to. If they were on your head, you want to know if they've been flying off on the floor somewhere. And it turns into this big old Where's Waldo's game, you know. And where's Waldo? He's not here, I know that for sure. I could I could spend all day coming up with crazy tunes and I mean for me there it's not all that hard. I mean I and I don't have any problem disowning them too, you know, because the whole process of making a song is the matter of just ending the freaking thing because making starting it doesn't require a whole lot of work. If you're worrying about what this is, it's not anything no big deal. What it is is I've got a certain spot on my on my face that just kind of leaks, okay? I don't know what it's leaking, pus, who knows what. And then it, I'll sit there and I'll scratch on it, and it'll let out some blood, and the blood will just come down the side of the face, and it'll harden. I won't even bother to try scratching it to see what the, it exactly it is, but it looks awful. And my mom looks at it, and she's like, what the frick you do with your face? And I'm like, it's just this one spot on my face that I, I can't tell if it's a cancer or what. It's just uh, running shit all the time. And I mean, I have this tendency to try to pick zits on my face without really going to the mirror to figure out what they are, you know? It's kind of like, hey, this kind of feels like the zit. You start picking it and you keep doing that. And then uh, sometime later you got a cancer, I mean not a cancer, but uh, a scab there. And then people think, oh my goodness, what do you use with your face? And it's because you're sitting there and you know you got it, something like a zit up there, but you can't figure out what it is, and so you just keep squeezing it. Yeah, you know, it's 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 uh, good material, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I did say I was the bamboozled je jelly bean for the, for the youngsters because they're going to come along and they're going to be like, Hey, you're watching that stuff again? That guy is funny. And they're like, and you're like, uh, yeah, I don't know how I ended up here. This is this YouTube thing them and their AI and their AI has just this crazy sense of what everybody likes. You know, it's completely based upon people falling asleep in front of their video feed and the AI is like, hey, so you like this? Oh, you like this? Oh, you like this? Oh, you like this? It says, I can give you somebody that's into all that shit and they throw me on my channel where I sit there and talk about politics and religion and, and, uh, and then I sing a little bit, and then I'll uh, go outside. I mean, it's just a bunch of different kinds of content, and the AI is confused. You know, it doesn't know what to think. That's the best. That's that's how you get popular on YouTube. Is you, you confuse the fuck out of the AI, and it and it, then it will just suggest everybody come to your channel. You know. But I don't think anybody would subscribe to me if I didn't say something a little bit smart every now and then. So, I think that's what it is. I don't research shit. I, mean, I don't research anything. Um, 
it's if it's there, it's there because I saw some documentary and I'm just recalling it like I was talking about the other day. I was talking about code and I said, yeah, Steve Ballmer said that something about IBM that they tended to evaluate uh, coders by how much actual code they created. They called it, he had some name for it. It was like Coda, Coda Kills or something like that and uh, Killer Codes or something like that. And he said that it, 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 it was disgusting. I mean, it's disgusting to me to think that they had this metric back in the 70s for how much, how what the quality of your code was, that is how much it made, how much code you had made for something, when the reality is you want to cut down on the no, amount of, of executable you've got because that will make your whole thing efficient. That's the reason why they tell us to be lazy coders, so we'll spend a lot of time thinking about the design of the code and how it's, how to make it more efficient. And that is reducing the amount of lines of code that's in it. Um, it's a, Some guys are really good at that. You know, like, I'm sure the guy who created Minecraft, Notch, I'm sure the source code to Minecraft is, is was originally pretty pretty tight and then people just started adding crap to it and now it's probably going to turn into Frankenstein of code probably got a lot of bugs in it and junk you know especially if Microsoft's messing with it so do you know he ran the Mensa chapter and where was it uh, Finland or somewhere you know he ran the Mensa chapter Notch did that, that's how smart the guy is. He owns the most expensive uh, mansion in Hollywood right now. Um, Bill Gates paid, I mean, Microsoft paid $2 billion for, for uh, Mojang and, and the Minecraft and all that. So they bought Minecraft for $2 billion. And so there's this guy walking around in Hollywood, and his name is Notch, and he's a billionaire. Um and you probably would never be able to recognize him on the street because, you know, he doesn't look... There's really nothing about this guy that um, really stands out from what I recall. He looks almost no different than any other kind of European European dude that uh, that eats European food, you know, that wears non unique nothing nothing out there clothing you know um he's a little bit like me but probably doesn't wear any any t-shirts with um stuff like like a blackberry smoke you know the 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 band blackberry smoke so he probably doesn't have a blackberry smoke t-shirt it's probably it's probably something he bought at the Gap, you know. And if he's listening to this, I'd say, Notch, you're you're wonderful. You're a fantastic programmer. You kick your ass. You created the whole that whole Minecraft with procedural algorithms that produce these big old caves. And I know you must have sat around trying to figure out what you needed to um, to to. Uh, you probably used Perlin noise functions to come up. With your uh, with your cave procedural thing, uh, it you know it you know it's got something to it, and it's got to be just like layers and layers of of recursive um, functions that are that are um, that are doing conditionals on each other to determine whether or not it needs to put in a mine shaft or if it needs to put in a cave um, system or and, and it's maintaining all these predicates and all that stuff. He's throwing all that stuff into that program. And he was just, he must have been just thinking it up on the fly. And then he came to the point to where, okay, I need to have something like a computer programming language in here. And then he thought to himself, you know what? If you take people out of this game and force them to do something in the real world, like writing a script, they're going to lose the fun of being in the game. So I'm going to have to make something that's made with the game for it to be, um, 
for for the children and, and whoever is going to be playing this game to not be wanting to get out of the game. They, they're, I want it to be completely immersive. And that's probably the reason why he came up with Redstone in the first place was the is because he didn't want to write a scripting language, and he wanted it to be um, immersive, completely immersive, so that people wouldn't come out of the game to go do something serious like write a script. They could get spending a lot of time writing scripts and get nowhere. And wouldn't you rather waste your time inside of Minecraft or on the outside of Minecraft? And so he picked Redstone. And with redstone, just the orientation of where the redstone goes determines um, what kinds of Boolean logic it can produce. And then the added pistons with um, sticky pistons, they're called, with um, s sand. And, um, and based upon the, or the phase of the piston, you could create basically flip-flops. And a D flip-flop, I found, is the, the easiest um, the easiest combination of sticky pistons and sand and redstone to produce a, a D flip, a, produce a flip-flop. They have JK flip-flops, but they're way too complex. And D flip-flop, of course, is not all that complex because it's the simplest um, Boolean... Um, simplest Boolean uh, function for st storing uh, a um, storing a state of of memory, and uh, I created a thirteen bit ripple counter D flip uh, D flip flop ripple counter, which is like the dumbest, most simplest thing that anybody can ever produce with anything with digital electronics is a ripple counter. Because all it is is it's just it's just um, flip flops connected to each other um, in a series, but it produces it, it produces a counter that counts from one in this case to four thousand ninety six or no that's wrong thirteen bit is thousand one hundred ninety two is where it counts to. And, you know, you go, oh, wow, you know, and what I, I even had the redstone coming up to some, uh, to some yellowstone lights, or what is the, the, the goldstone lights, you get the goldstone from the um, nether, and then you send your redstone to go up to the edge of your goldstone lights, and it energizes them. To, to show like an LED display or something. But LED display would be really complex. In that case, what you'd have to do is you would have to implement something of the form of read-only memory inside of the game. Um, and that would probably be a set of torches in certain fashions. And then whenever you um, have a certain value that's coming out, you would have to... You would have to, um, um, you would have to, to have it um, power on an OR circuit that would then take in the the um, well. It would be an OR circuit, and then the OR circuit would connect to some. You know, I I could spend a little time trying to figure out how to do it, but it's really just. A bunch of leads coming off onto a display, and you're having you probably will have to do a Carnot map on some TT some uh, um, set of Boolean operators that when they take in a binary um, a binary digit will pop out the necessary um, ons and offs to the LED display. That's how you would do it. And you use a Carnot map to reduce the the Boolean operators in the in the thing that's um, doing the translation from the. When I was thinking, when I was learning a little bit about what neural nets was, I was thinking to myself that doesn't sound much different than a Carnot map. Carnot map might be used.
to help you come up with some of the, I mean, well, I mean, you're not going to use a Carnot map, but the, the Carnot map, what it's really about is to reduce the map, uh, it's, it's to reduce the logic operations that are needed within a function such that it gets you the output values you want given the input values. It, it's, I mean, you can, you can simply use an, uh, an EEPROM or a, a, a ROM to come up with the necessary outputs given inputs, but it's going to use a multiple of, of um, operators in order to do that, or a, a multiple of, it's just going to be like a stored piece of memory um, for the for the LED, and it's going to use a multiplexer to determine which um, outputs are produced. And I mean, it's just going to pop in an address I mean, you don't even use a multiplex, you just use a mod operator or something and or um, and you pop in your bit value and it determines uh, which memory address in the ROM generates the outputs necessary for the LED display. That'd be the simplest thing to do. Um, but since you're using Redstone and you're, signed, and you're inside of Minecraft, you might want to do it with Booleans rather than using... Uh, something like a uh, like a ROM, you know, because I can just see you producing, um, putting up some redstone torches um, to produce the outputs, and then um, having to deal with which um, outputs are. I guess that wouldn't be a problem, would it? Just make sure there isn't any, any uh, pat, a crossover. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to implement ROM, ROM memory or you know, uh, a non-RAM ROM memory because inside of uh, Minecraft you would have to, to create RAM storage you would have to, use flip flops because, um, because there's or or oh you could use pistons. You could use pistons to, to set the what the memory is inside of. Uh, otherwise, you would just use redstone torches and place them in various areas. But you would have to go over and change those, the the orientation of the, of the torches. Whereas with pistons, you can just send, a a um, a power signal to it and it will change its state. Um, how would you know, that it was in the right position well you would probably have to have a lead coming out of it to tell you what it, um, value it was producing I mean you could take that from the outputs but you might want to have an extra lead just in case you're creating something a bit more complex than a ROM um, you know something you could do uh, maybe have an extra lead come in and out of all the functions so you can do uh, black box sex testing, you know, so that, I mean, you're not taking the data that's coming out of the device. You're, you're checking to see what the values are based upon the inputs for each individual sub function of the complete um, collection of redstone. But, you know, he thought, you know, about that, I'm sure he he must have spent some time thinking, uh, how am I going to create a language for this? I, I don't want people to learn how to type. I mean, children shouldn't have to know how to type in order to code for this thing. And they're going to be just dropping something. They're going to be dropping blocks. They know how to cut blocks up and they know how, I mean, they know how to, to mine and they know how to place blocks. So that would have to be the subset of everything they do that has to be the most maximum they do of anything and the most minimum of what they do of of crafting is just um, mining blocks and in determining ways of creating blocks but or in placing blocks but not anything beyond that and so within those constraints he came up with redstone because all redstone is just another kind of block. It's um, 
it's um, it's a, a way of setting up circuitry within inside Minecraft. Anyhow. Yeah.